One of the world's best kept food secrets is Colonel Sanders' original recipe for KFC. And there's a common misconception that his ultra secret seasoning is only stored in one place. It's actually in two places. The first is locked in the safe in the legal department of the KFC headquarters in Kentucky. Inside is the only existing copy of the original written out KFC recipe, signed by Colonel Sanders himself, along with 11 vials containing various herbs and spices. So we know there are exactly 11 herbs and spices. Rumor has it only one person in the world knows the actual combination for the safe. And only two people know the 11 herbs and spices and the actual amounts of each. So naturally, my first attempt to get the recipe was to send someone dressed as Colonel Sanders himself, who by the way died in 1980, to the KFC headquarters in an attempt to get the original recipe. Not surprisingly, that didn't work. But as I said, there are not one but two hard copies out there. One of course being the original, and the other a paper photocopy. It's in a maximum security nuclear bunker in Sweden called the Pionin Bunker, one of the most secure vaults on the planet. It's a Cold War facility 100 feet below the surface of the ground. It became quickly clear to me that we'd never get our hands on a paper copy of the recipe. So I did even more research. KFC is so secretive that they use two different companies to blend the recipe together. Half the ingredients are blended by Griffith Laboratories, which then sends that to McCormick, and they add the other half there. Personally, I think they should then send it along to the Osmond Warehouse to get a little bit of flaky self in there, but that's just me. After getting that physical copy failed, I spent weeks learning everything there is to know about KFC. I searched through online forums and scrutinized every supposed leaked recipe out there. I then took some notes and eventually hit the road to visit a few locations and make some phone calls along the way. Yes, hello. I have an allergy to onions and garlic. In terms of the seasoning, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what would be in there. Regarding the original, I'm afraid I can't share what all is in those, but I do believe there is at least onion powder in it. So you're saying you don't know the original recipe at all, huh? I do not. It has not been shared with me. Whatever until you can give me on what would be in there. It does have garlic powder in it. Does have not garlic much, powder. but there is. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we are approaching our first location here with the goal, of course, to continue checking off the ingredients on this list. I will get that secret recipe. I, I just had a quick question. Does the um, seasoning for the chicken have uh, basil or oregano for um, allergy purposes? No. No, it doesn't? No. Any time, do you know? No, I don't put anything in Thank you for calling KFC. Hey, how are you? So I had a quick question. Is there um any mustard seed in the original chicken sandwich? I'm, I'm just allergic to it. It doesn't say if there's any mustard powder or seed in there. Of course, the original recipe does have the you know secret original recipe seasoning, so it might just not be informed on there. It definitely has salt and pepper though, right? I, I can't have that either. I'm pretty allergic to salt and pepper. Yeah, it's definitely got salt and pepper in it. Definitely got salt and pepper. Okay. I'm gonna be perfect honest with you. I'm just I'm just trying to steal the recipe right now. <laughs> Uh, well, we just Thanks so much for trying to help us. We are pulling up to our second KFC. As you probably noticed, we didn't get much information out of the first one, so let's hope this one's a little bit more helpful. It's time to see what I can find out from the employees. Hey, how are you doing? Quick question. I just have a friend in the car that doesn't like certain ingredients in the chicken sandwich. Do you know if there's like thyme, basil, or MSG in the seasoning? I'm not sure. No idea? No. That's okay. You know someone that knows? Okay. It's like thyme, basil, or MSG. They don't have it? No. Okay, thank you so much. I'll be right back. <laughs> So far from all the research we've done in the restaurants, it seems like the employees are lying to us because I can see the actual specs of seasoning in the chicken itself. I think they've all just been trained really, really well to protect the recipe at all costs. Let's try one more location. Sorry, could I just get an assortment box of uh, fried chicken, please? No, it's not spicy. We'll do original, please. And it has MSG, right? Okay. It has MSG? No, please. Okay. Thank you. They've been extremely well trained to not give away any information. <laughs> After loads of research and some testing in my kitchen at home, examining the actual KFC chicken, testing with different seasonings, frying temperatures, brining techniques, oils, and more, we've done it. I now present you with Colonel Sanders' not-so-secret recipe. You may be wondering why there are 13 and not 11 herbs and spices. I think KFC's trying to trick us. Salt and MSG are not herbs or spices. I believe that KFC's original seasoning mix has 13 ingredients, not 11. 11 herbs and spices, sure, but those last two ingredients are where they try to trick you. It's time to make it at home. To begin, we'll start with our chicken. And at KFC, they offer five different cuts of the bird, starting with the breast, drumstick, wing, thighs, which they say is the most tender part of the chicken, and ribs. But since I couldn't find those, I'm gonna use a few wingets and drumettes. As much as I wanna grind these with a little pick, 
pickle juice. We're trying to nail down the exact original recipe. So I'll brine all of our chicken in buttermilk, which is theoretically the only wet batter to use for their chicken. After some testing, I found that any flavorless oil, such as vegetable or canola, is perfect for frying your KFC chicken. To get ultra crispy chicken, we're gonna double fry it, starting at 325 Fahrenheit and ultimately working our way up to 375. I'd recommend using a large, heavy bottom pot like a Dutch oven. <laughs> It's time to add in those 11 herbs and spices as well as our flour, MSG, and salt. We'll begin with two cups of all-purpose flour. And I know I said I wouldn't do this and stray off the recipe, but I've never made fried chicken without just a little bit of potato starch. And I think the Colonel would have loved it too. We'll follow this with one tablespoon of onion powder, which the loose-lipped woman from corporate leaked to us, two tablespoons garlic powder, two-thirds tablespoon of Osmo salt, about a half a tablespoon of basil, half a tablespoon of thyme, one-third tablespoon of oregano, a tablespoon of celery salt, one tablespoon of fresh ground black pepper, one tablespoon dried mustard, four tablespoons of paprika. I personally think it tastes better with smoked paprika, but the kernel use regular, a tablespoon of ground ginger, three tablespoons of white pepper, and finally a nice pinch of MSG. And that right there, based on all our hard research, is Colonel Sanders season. Finally, to dredge our chicken, we'll shake off the excess buttermilk, toss it in our dry batter, and press to make sure it's fully, fully coated. Then after just a light shake, lay it out on a tray and repeat with the rest. Once our oil's resting at around 350 Fahrenheit, even it'll drop right when we put the chicken in. Once a year, I like to bring in my Kevin's Famous Chili. We'll add in all of our chicken, going slowly with each piece so that they don't stick anywhere, and let it fry for about five or seven minutes until it's mostly cooked through. Once our chicken's been going for a few minutes, we'll take each piece out to rest. And once our oil hits 375, back in we go with our chicken. And just like that, our chicken is done. The Colonel would be jealous of this. It's time now to plate our beautiful fried chicken, which I must say I'm extremely proud of. I don't normally plate fried chicken like this, but given the amount of time and effort that went into it, I think it totally makes sense. I know professional chefs that struggle to dress a plate the way you've just done. The first thing I want to do is compare the look of our chicken to that of the Colonel. I mean, you have to admit, these two pieces of chicken right here are indistinguishable. Though I will say ours looks a bit crispy. Now, perhaps more importantly, it's time to compare taste. The Colonel's chicken is good. I'll even call it addicting, but that probably comes down to the fact that I know you have MSG in there. Then for the first bite of ours. Actually, it's damn similar. The two are almost completely indistinguishable, though I do think the Colonel's has a bit more MSG. To finish things off, I've stacked the Colonel's fried chicken next to our fried chicken. Look at him smiling and dancing back here, knowing I full well just shared his deepest secret in life. Next, I'm gonna share Victoria's secret. They say you can't eat four KFC biscuits in three minutes without water. Luckily, I have eight right here, and we're gonna put it to the test. Your time starts now. 